the Scott Kid. This is Palace Day, Sheila Greeno. It's Thursday, and what you previously were watching and listening to was Slaughter Party from Kenosha, Wisconsin. Hey, guys. Hello. Hi. So Hi. really neat, I think, is that a year ago, when I first started doing this show and had recruited <laughs> bands to start coming on Slaughter Party with the Union League, they were the first two ever to come on the show. They've been back another time. Um, before to highlight another EP that they had done we did tacos and now we're back because they've been super busy They just released or are going to release uh, Another new album called the after party which you got to hear on Tuesday night if you watched if not You can always go back to the YouTube and watch and pay attention And so I welcome you and thank you guys for always kind of being supportive of me and coming on to this show again to continue to promote yourselves so how about we start with introductions for any new people who are watching and paying attention. We'll start over here. Hi, I'm Jared. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a... <laughs> oh, I'm Will, he's Jared. <laughs> and you do? Oh, I, I play guitar. Nothing. And, well. And do really crappy backup vocals. <laughs> yes. I'm Ray, I play bass and I sing. I am the real Jared. <laughs> and I play drums. You didn't stand up though, so oh. no one yes. knows. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Take a wow. Yeah. And we're actually we're we are a slaughter party tonight. Usually we're size fives for some reason, <laughs> but we're we are a slaughter party tonight. So welcome back once again. Um, I would have to say that it would seem as if this past year has been a whirlwind. You've done a lot of recording. You've put out a lot of stuff, and as far as like your presence online, I see a lot of your guys' stuff all of the time. So, let's talk about the new album. That's going to be released when? December 8th. Right, and that is going to be a CD release show, correct? It's a CD release show. It will be here in Kenosha at Hatricks on 60th Street. Um, sharing the night will be um, uh, Peach Vomit from Wonder Lake, oh, yeah. Illinois. Uh, Billy Dreamer, who you've seen on the show, uh, Josh, good dude. He does the Milwaukee Punk Fest. Great, great group of guys. They're coming down for that as well. Um, the First Rule, um, good friends of ours who've kind of supported us as well um, since the beginning. Um, the Hatred Embrace, which is a debut show for that lineup. I believe it's it's mostly the Bastards Asylum uh, kind of reformed, and then the Astronomer. The Astronomer, sorry, yes, The Astronomer wow. as well. Um, and really, also on this show previously. Right. Uh, and actually the coolest thing about the release show, besides just getting, having a standard show with a, you know, with a lineup, again, six, li six band lineup for five bucks, that's it. Uh, we also have Stephen Shagwell from Your Band Sucks yes. coming up from Kansas. That's awesome. Um, and he, does, he has um, a site where he just roasts the bands uh, and just, I mean, it's just awesome. tears them a whole new asshole. It, it's, it's fantastic. Everybody's always so uptight and trying to do things the right way. Hey, look at me. I'm terrific. No, I mean, it's, it's just kind of cool. Can, you know, just kind of doing see us real. reading our, our, your band sucks review on our Facebook page. We watched that. <laughs> how did you guys, their Facebook to, page. How'd you come to find them? I found them because I was stalking, uh, <laughs> Billy Dreamer's, uh, Facebook page and okay. I saw, I saw their video with that. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> fucking amazing. So I had to contact the guy right away and try to get a review done. And then First Rule got one. And then uh, yeah. Thunder Driver got one. So yeah. I told Terry, I'm like, hey, you got to do this too. you know. And, uh, but he's the guy's fantastic. He's absolutely hilarious. So this is going to be his first ever um, live show where he's going to come on and do a live comedy act in between every band. So as soon as they finish while they're still on stage, he's going to get up for five, ten minutes and just roast the fuck out of them on stage in front of everybody. He's brutal, too. And then oh, watch them as they, as they pack their shit up with their heads down, walk off the stage and get booed off. The next person to get up to get their asshole. Do you have, like, a greeter so. giving free hugs? So they're, like... Or we might have to. Yeah. Or Jared could be in the corner here, five dollar. Yeah. <laughs> five dollar hugs. Five dollar hugs. Five dollar yeah. finger hugs. It's more like <laughs> therapists. We'll have to after this. Yeah, so that, that's going to be a lot of fun. We're very excited about it. I think we've been getting a pretty good response with that so yeah. far. Um, we really want to make it big again. Show this guy Steve, who's coming from Kansas. Uh, show him a good time. You know, it's a great lineup. A lot of people from out of town coming. So any support, you know, please, you know, find the event, share it, share it, share it, please. Mm -hmm. Um. So <coughs> interestingly enough, 
that is like a second venue because originally it was booked at Kraken Cakes, correct? Yes. So what happened with that? You want her up? Well, she is cold. That's all I know. I, I, there was an issue. I just found uh, out like twenty minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's I was looking through Facebook. And it's like. Oh, we're sorry, cracking cakes. Is well, yeah, like, I just, what? I just, oh, by the way, we're playing over here instead of this place. Oh, okay. No, no, so, no. I, I knew that. Right, I, I know, knew we were playing there, but I didn't know they had closed. No, it was it was some licensing yeah. issue. I don't want to get into the you gotcha. know all of the drama with exactly with that, but For it was sure. unfortunate. It was a cool venue, um, and I know it's kind of funny because both Peach Mom and Ann Billy Dreamer are at Hatricks the week before the show, so mm -hmm. having them, you know, they're back in the same place two weeks in a row. But it's cool because they're out of town. That way, we get a chance to hey, they go come here on December first, and then. People can talk, their friends tell their friends, mm -hmm. and their friends tell their friends, whatever, hey, make sure to see these guys, they're coming back again next week. So it works out, you know, uh, but that wasn't planned originally, no. You guys have but, been doing a yeah. lot of shows. So with in the last year since we've had you on, do you want to kind of give an overview as to what you've done and how much you've grown since the last time you've oh, been here? Oh, we played Summerfest. You did? Yeah, that was yeah. awesome. That was the best. Loved it. <laughs> that was one of the best shows I've ever played. Yeah. Yeah, was Summer fun. Fest was fantastic. We sounded yeah. good. We played yeah. good. We were, you know, just high, high on the whole day. Yeah, huge, huge crowd. People from all over came in, stayed. I think that was the coolest part. Reception. Like when we first started playing, yeah, the, there, the there really weren't many people. Yeah, see it. There, there, there was a few, but as the set went on, it just yeah. packed. You know, people oh, yeah. standing on picnic tables on rocks all over the place. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was cool. nuts. No, and even like hours after we were that playing, going to the park, people like pick you up. Hey, fucking awesome set! You know, yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that. We did um, we some other pretty cool, cool really festivals. Cool. You know, um, you know, we've done oh, what, a Taste of Wisconsin, Friday nasties. Weens, Trim Fest, all that good stuff. Um, neighborhood Nassies. Oh yeah, yeah. We did. Uh, we <laughs> ran our own indoor outdoor festival, um, mm -hmm. like a summer barbecue at uh, that was at Hatricks as well. It's kind of our home bar. Uh, that was in August. That was a really, really good turnout. That was really fun. Uh, great <laughs> event. A lot of work, but totally worth it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we'd like to do that again uh, this coming year. So uh, hopefully make it a little bigger. Uh, this next time we're trying to do maybe a Friday and Saturday with mm. it. Originally we wanted to call it Slaughter Fest, and we wanted to have a pig, or like a pig roast. Ooh. And have like <laughs> we a, can still like do a, that. <laughs> like a freak show acts and stuff like that in between bands. Ooh. That would be cool. But what would you say with the connections you've made or continue to grow that that's now going to be possible with maybe getting grindhouse we're closer. and stuff? I think so. We also did want to have even like like burlesque, you know, a bunch right. of other stuff going on at night too. So just timing and just all the work putting it together. So we ended up, I mean, it was just a, just a ton of bands inside and outside, but it was it was absolutely a blast. Made a lot of good friends, I think, um, you know, just helping out the local music community that's you know, still struggling. I think it always does, but as long as there's people out there that are pushing, you know, pushing, trying to give it a, hey, right, good job, do it, man. <laughs> and I do think there's going to be another right. Cinco de Mayo, too. Yep. Right? I are we going to so. do that again? Because that was amazing, too. Yeah. That was You're the spot one. now. Are we doing I really it loved the way that that event was set <laughs> yeah. up. It was awesome. <laughs> From vendors to, you know, having yep. available space for bands to set up little pop-up tents and have their merch available. I I was very thoroughly impressed with the way that that was run. Um, and super family friendly. Yep. Like mm -hmm. not even a hesitation to bring my kids back to that place because it was safe and there was a sense of community and everything was easily located. It wasn't like a dangerous sort of, I'm kind of bringing my kids to this shady thing. And right. it helps, I um, think, really expand upon the market. Because if we Oreo. don't allow... Shady people. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't allow you know, youth to have people. accessible music, then our scenes will die. And I think that you know, one of my goals is that we have or start to have more all age sort of things because I think people freak out and they go, all ages, ah, all these little kids are going to show up and there's going to be all these issues. Most often parents are coming with their kids and 16, 17, 18 year olds, you know, have the availability to drive and go places and start to explore different outlets. And specifically in how I like to target all age shows too, is that 18 to 20 demographic has nowhere to fucking go. Yeah. If you are a college student who's 19 who's like, what's in the local area? 
I mean, what is there for you to do? Bar you anything. can't. You're anywhere too late that serves alcohol because they're no, going to kick your ass out. Very, very few <laughs> shows and things like that for, you know, they're inclusive for any wander yeah. under age. So I would love it. Stinko was fantastic. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, Corey, Sean, those guys, those guys killed it. It was ridiculous. Um, and also with the Halloween super, show, did it over there awesome. too. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I, I enjoyed that as yeah. well. Really cold. Yeah, it was really cold. <laughs> yeah, so we've been really having a lot of, like, a, I think, a good balance of, you know, festivals, private parties, tr- traditional gigs, mm-hmm. you know, you yeah. know um, just try to, you know, continue to do all of it and Try to keep not, things fresh too. Overdo you know. it. And, you know, we were able to get in Chicago. Yeah. Yes. A bit. Yeah. Some of the suburbs Liars as well. Club. Liars Club. Uh, the fall. We really awesome. like Liars Club. Liars Club was awesome. Rower House was cool, but, you know, there was another show going on that was a little bit of rough. Well, we had to compete with Macabre. Ah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Why didn't they just put those shows together? And, and they played the That would have been cool. Well, they're in the same building, like in the other stage. We were in there. It was like, yeah. Macabre's a bunch of assholes, though. And I swear to fucking Christ. No, I had to go get these guys dinner because we booked them at Parkside. And they came and played at Parkside. And they're like, hey, darling, if you could go just do this and be quiet. Motherfucker, I put this show together. And number two, I booked and paid you. Fuck you, don't call me darling. And then I quietly went to Burger King, not so quietly, mm-hmm. and listened to my ska music on the way to go get Burger King and <laughs> got them their food. So that's how that went in person. Did you spit in it? I did not. Should've. No, I don't have to Jared? be disrespectful. <laughs> I will be honest with you to your face. Just call Jared and have him do something to it. No, why? <laughs> Stop something. How have things Apparently been as something. far... I mean, you've been super busy. How is that working, being able to balance personal life, since I know that you, some of you have children, with being able to play out so much? All three of us are almost on the street because of it. Yeah? No, I'm kidding. Our <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, uh, friends and family hate us because of it. No, that's... <laughs> it's it's, it's it easier wrong. for me. These yeah. guys these, these right. guys are the ones who have, yeah, you no. know, they have the issues. And it, I, I it, helps, it helps very much to have um, supporting spouses in this which is sure. amazing yeah mm-hmm. absolutely and yeah, both uh, jared and i have kids and all that stuff. Go ahead. yeah <laughs> no i'm just saying <laughs> I, over everybody just want to thank them Excited. thank the spouses so much for letting us do this because it is hard it, it is, is. Sure. i mean like sure. your super hard. goal initially when i met you was to play as many shows as possible and continue to release music yes. and you know at first it seemed like there was a balance because you weren't playing out so much but now you've really kind of amped that up and you know you have more production and you have more merch and you have more things going on and so i know mm-hmm. that that takes a toll on that yeah. so you know it's good that you have continued support um mm-hmm. because most often i think that jealousy kind of plays into it and they're like you're with your other family than our our family sure right so, yeah but I that, that being said with the all age shows and things that you've been doing have you been bringing your families to these things do they want to come? Yeah, for, uh, for a few of them. I mean, like we're we're able. Um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of times, you know, with my my son, his uh, he has uh, special needs, so my wife is usually you know has to stay in with him, and obviously, we're not going to bring a four year old up to a bar. No, you know, yeah. um, and he has kind of a tough time even in you know all these places. There's a lot of my people dad took me to bars when I was four. So, <laughs> well, well that's now. exactly why you are the way you are. Great. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. No, they're, they're very great. And they're like very, very supportive, you know. Um, but I think we're actually trying to, well, we have some other future plans I want to get into too much for our next full-length album already as well, too. So uh, we're actually trying to hold off uh, not booking so much in the near future. We're going to try to keep it to just maybe two gigs a month. Mm. Um, try to keep that kind of as a maximum, make sure we're alternating cities as well. Gotcha. Um, just try not to oversaturate um, and have some time to be able to get some work done. Where would you say you have the biggest draw, locally or when you go yeah. out places? Definitely Patrick's. I mean, the locally, Patrick's yeah. we usually probably do best. Patrick's, yeah. of sometimes, but I, I like Patrick's. We do well over there. So I've been labeling you all as horror punk. Is that appropriate or would you give yourselves a different title? I call it Kill Pop. Kill pop? Yeah. Why? Because it, every, everything's about killing, and it's more pop music. It's more like pop funk, pop metal, mm. kind of a. I don't know. It just works. I don't know. I, I, I don't quite see it as a traditional horror punk sound. I mean, like I think the lyrical content is horror punk. It's yes. not presented that way. That's true. You know, um, it has that message, but with a 
you know, more, you know, like kind of catchy pop, you know, mainstream punk rock, you know, metal kind of mashup. So when you post that, that, like, you know, on Bandcamp or SoundCloud or whatever that asks you to tag your genre, is that something? I use that, but I, I, I do put horror punk. I put horror punk, punk, metal, rock, <laughs> alt rock, kill pop, you know, I put them all on there. Your horror punk. Somebody's gonna have their guns. I mean, I'd rather to say, hey, it, it's a What's band. That? It's a band. Well, that's band. what I like about it. Is like, you know, people think, oh, slaughter They gotta be so heavy. It's like, <coughs> yeah. Then you whip it on them, and they're like, what? Like, yeah, yeah. That's why I love. You're fun it. death. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's slaughter like party. killing with a yeah, smile. That's your next party. Party. Yeah, yeah, like, That's what the party's about, man. It's like that. totally it's upbeat. Uh, they're you know, talking about you know slicing right. people in half. But again, it's written like more from the eyes of the killer than him. You know? He's having a good time. That's why I love, you know, duo. It's totally something that people don't expect. It, it has a good mix, I think, um, lyrically as well as you know, instrumentally, because you do have that pop punk fun with like, holy shit, these guys are. Right. Yeah, but yeah, when you actually, when you actually <laughs> listen to what listen to what he's saying, yeah, it's like. like Wait, what? What the fuck did you just say? Yeah. Like, I think that you all should like have a gimmick where you stitch a friend together and you bring yeah. this thing with you because that would be super cool to see. Yeah. Just, yeah. just saying. Um, where have you, I think that you've developed at least and grown as a band since the last time we had you on for Taco Night. Yes. To here. Yep. So talk about the progression that you all have made as a band. Where do you think your strengths are? Uh, the strengths come from the three of us. I mean, definitely working together. All of us have our own, I think, jobs, our own roles within the band. You know, outside of you know, just at the shows as well. Um, you know, and also recently we've um, uh, kind of enlisted a McLeod Media Company as well. Uh, Karen, she's been fantastic. Uh, really big, uh, just help. You know, just getting the word out. So, as again, with such a busy schedule, so it's. That's nice. my big question. Sure. What is that? Because I've read this page, I've tried to look them up online. I, I know that um, it would look as if previously um, she was like almost just a reviewer or a person who wrote and posted things on different print no. media with the, you know, what was it? Oh, I forget the name. Um, she just posted it to you. The two magazines that she's a part of. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. what what services does that media company offer you, and is that something that you have to pay for? I mean, it, it all depends. I mean, there are tons of services. She has a wide network of services available. So, for give her. an example <laughs> specifically. Uh, recording, uh, you know, merch, uh, you know, radio play, a whole bunch of other, just anything that you that you need help with. Typically, we're pretty DIY, so. Really, our relationship is just a uh, social media strategist. So, does she post your social media for you? On occasion, some things. Yeah. So, I think what? it's more we post it, and she shares it with all the people she's got in her network. Gotcha. Yeah, but she'll continue to post really also post things through her network as well. So, so what's the difference between McLeod Media and what we do? <laughs> it's very similar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as services, has it benefited you to partner with this person? Have you seen an increase in likes or in people showing up to your shows or buying your stuff? Yes. Yeah, we've seen an increase. Uh, and again, it hasn't been that long. It's only been, it's been for a few months. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we've seen an increase in, you know, Facebook or just uh, social social media presence has, you know, has boomed a bit uh, with that help. Um, and then in some of the shows in the Chicago area, yeah, we see more, you know, more people, new fans, people that have um, come to see us. Come to see us. The they've just only seen us through our website. Yeah. If you know, we don't know them. Hey, we've been following you on Facebook. We're so again, just that additional, um, you know, help getting stuff out there. We've been meeting people that we don't know out of, come out of town, other places that have been able to follow us online. So that's really cool. And we've been selling records in other countries and sold merchandise in other countries and things, so that's pretty cool. So, as a band, where do you invest your money into certain things? 
to be able to continue to promote yourself? Mostly merch. it's merch. <laughs> yeah. Merch. Yeah, we have a lot of money sitting in merch. We don't we don't take any money. Everything we earn just goes into a band box mm -hmm. and all of our expenses just come from the band box. Mm -hmm. How much merch do you have available? Because I know I have a shirt and a new C D. Haha <laughs> motherfuckers. I got it first. <laughs> But, um, you know, what what is going to be available? Because I know that you guys always bring stuff to every show that you, you do sure. anyway. Um, we have, there's a, a couple different styles of shirts. Um, there are three CDs, uh, well, starting on December 8th. We have we have our original, it's still a limited edition Brain Eater uh, demo CD. That was our original recordings. A lot of the songs were on Cycles in Love. On Cycles in Love was just completely different recording sessions, so kind of redone. Um, but it's cool because that was the original um, and then there's also a couple live recordings on that that's still available we have the cycles of love full-length album and then we'll have the after party which is cool i got three cds within just you know less than two years of us yeah. playing yes. so uh two kinds of shirts and we also have an online store as well now too with um unfortunately we don't really have the capital to I, you know to stock up on you know bulk mm -hmm. quantities of all these different designs of things we have sweatshirts we have uh, in, uh embroidered caps and some other things as well that. Uh, so we have some items on hand and some things we have is a uh, print on demand. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, pricing we can't get them quite as you know, you know, offer them for the price that we can on the stuff we have in person. But um, you know, they're there and there's some different designs that you know are available, um, and they'll ship anywhere. With your um, new merch, as far as that, because I saw that you had posted. That, um, <coughs> yeah, it's a big which, cartel. Right. What made you go with them instead of trying to seek out a local print shop? Just. Uh, do you think that it's more cost effective than going local? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've checked a lot of local places and it just seemed to be, you know, the best solution for what we need that fit our, you know, our, our game plan. And again, we do have a, we do have a lot of merch on hand and we do, you know, well with that. Um, I know that one but, time we had talked and you said that pretty much any time that you do a show, most of your <laughs> income is not from what you receive at the door, but no, actually no. from what comes it, from people buying. So many of our shows, honestly, we, we play way too many free shows, mm. but I don't mind it. We all have jobs and you know, it's, we don't do this for our income. We do this for fun. I think when, once you start doing it as a job, it starts kind of losing its sparkle, yeah. you know? Do you think you've reached a point though, where you would have an asking price as a band? Yeah, I think we I could. think so. Yeah. So when do you transition from, you know, playing free shows to, hey, if you want us to play, if it's not something you're setting up, this is our price. Well, we were actually talking about that. Um, we haven't decided completely if we want to commit to something like that. But if we do, I mean, I think it would probably be, you know, maybe, you know, two out of three shows or something like that. But we still we still like doing benefits and those mm -hmm. community shows. I don't want to get rid of those and a lot of those things there is no money involved there's not right you know and i mean you, some of those things that you pay these bands all this you know a lot of money that they that they want to at least you know to walk out the door with you know something you know some kind of decent earnings they're just just you it's know the, the events not so it's just not going to happen yeah. it still don't work that way when you guys put a show together <coughs> are you posting it on certain um advertising sites that are free for instance in Milwaukee Rocks or the Daily Shepherd or any of that like do you put a press release together and send those to those places um, we do have a lot of the uh, like local news uh, columnists usually write um, about some upcoming shows like for our CD release show we'll have some things with the Kenosha news that'll be coming up again um, I know we did for our last one as well because um, that's free Right, yeah, it was, we, we do get exposure with that, um, and then we do... Because, um, like, Milwaukee Rocks is free. Yeah. The Daily Shepherd is free. Yep. There's a bunch that you just put a little press kit together of your show with the flyer art, and you just send it off, yeah. and they put it both in print and online, and it goes on their calendar. Yeah. So you get more metadata that way, which attracts to you. <clears throat> Actually, I haven't, I haven't tried that exact method, but that sounds pretty cool. Check that out. When we've put shows together recently, that's all I do. I put a press release together with the artwork and I send it off to about 30 places from between Madison down into Chicago and Joliet yeah. and they post it all over the place. I also now do pre-sale tickets and those have been successful because that gives me bank 
as a guarantee to be able to pay people. Yeah, I was looking into doing pre-sale tickets with some of these shows, but we just Eventbrite. Never... Yep, it's I saw super that. That's what you ended up doing, I yes. think, on your show. It would look pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But we ended up, I think the only thing we, we, we do pay for some, you know, some Facebook advertising and things mm -hmm. like that. And it's one of the bigger shows, just, um, you know, as band pages or business pages, just the algorithms they have built in there, like nobody sees it. Nobody you sees know, it unless if you pay for it. So that's not true though, because creating oh, the can, metadata you can, you does can share that. Share it and push it, you know, but it's, it's an additional push. Yeah. It is know, an it does, additional push help. because yeah. you can select the yeah. specific demographic yeah. that you want to yeah. target. And we've seen, you know, we've seen proven, has, you know, yeah, tried and true, helped. you know, with, you know, if you put some, you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, you do put some money, it, it does, it does get out more, you yeah. know, and the turnouts are typically um, substantially better when we do. Here's a giant question, and I'm sure it will strike several sure. nerves. Did Jared's going to answer it. <laughs> Did you guys <laughs> pay to play Friday Um, No. We sold tickets. Yes, we sold tickets. You don't have to pay to actually play, and then they give you tickets in hopes that that's what you get back as your payment. No, you just you buy tickets to sell. I, we we get them sold before we pick up the tickets, and you double your money on the tickets. Sure. We've actually profited like three hundred, like like two three hundred bucks on a swim fest show was before. Ah. Uh, one so. So you don't have to pay them for the tickets. Well, yeah, you have to pay for the tickets. Right, but so you, you have to pick pay up, to play. I mean, yeah, kind that, of. Yes. yes. The answer yeah. is yes. yes. Sure. So why do you do that? Play the big show. Bigger show. But did people show up to it? <clears throat> Couple times. Shrimp yes. Fest was good. Couple I'm, times. Do you know why I'm Friday asking you these so questions? Great. Because I don't want you to continue to be raped for things that go into other people's pockets. I'm sure. Because... My philosophy and my mission <coughs> is that no one should make money off of the backs of the musicians that are making the art. So, the people that go ahead and put together these giant festivals that ask you guys to pay tickets in hopes that you make your money back by selling those, that money goes to them. It doesn't go to you. So, however much that they pulled in at the door after that, that could have been divided oh, sure. up like at a hat trick show, sure. doesn't get to you guys, which is unfortunate because a band is not only a family and an art form, but it is also a business because you want to make money off of what you're doing, even if it doesn't become your end all be all life and your sole income. Um, I, I'm 100% against pay to play because I think it's unfair and it's unfortunate for the people who wanna do that because there are different ways that you can get on bigger shows that will only put you in the positive instead of the negative. And I mean, I don't think it's fair that people made money off of you guys instead of you guys banking that. Because the sole purpose is that your music gets out there. And I had seen the next day that four people showed up. I had seen overall that with a lot of the bands that were there, that there was a very low turnout for people who actually bent over backwards to promote. Mm -hmm. And you all had to create your own event page as well, which detracted completely from the event because those people that you paid to get those tickets from didn't even put an event page together. They don't do that, which does nothing but confuse the internet. So the band that has the most draw currently or who <coughs> shared the most would have that push. So like if you put a show together at Hattricks, and you say every single band has to put an event page on. Well, say you guys out of that show that you're doing on the 8th, whoever has the most likes or shares of that event will have that attraction. Sure. So they might not know that it's going on. Oh, yeah. Your fans might not even know that you're playing a show because it confuses the internet. So I would encourage you guys in the future <coughs> to streamline things that are going to attract to you. Sure. sure, sounds fair enough. I mean, do you think it's fair to pay other people for what you're doing? I mean, no, and, and I've and you made a very fair point. Um, no, I mean, I think on principle, I mean, it is unfortunate, but you know, there are a lot of events out there like that. Um, there's been many opportunities that are similar in some other venues, bigger venues, maybe out of state or out of out of town as well. That would have been really cool, but on the principle, we've always decided no. The only ones we've been okay with doing have been the um, those events. Um, Why is that level. okay, but other ones aren't? It's just a little more convenient. 
Mm. Think it's just a local venue as opposed yeah. to like driving, you know, two hours to somewhere. You know. Not sure yeah. if you're gonna play for there. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Well, if you sell your tickets, you'll play them for someone, right? That's the philosophy. Uh, that's philosophy, yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> as we found out, I mean, it doesn't always happen. No. Like I, I made a lengthy post about that, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. it's only because I was very bitter that night. If more yeah. people but, um, said no to pay to play, yeah. those people you would go be away. Better, though. Because you know why? You're valuing yourself as a band. Because did they seek you out? You're paying them and saying, please give me validity. Why? You, you, are, you guys uh, specifically should be confident enough because your shit pops up all over my Facebook. You see the problem? Oh, shit. Guys, oh, oh no, we don't want to get paid. Please don't pay us. Please don't. Right. Please. That, that's yeah. an yeah, unfortunate okay. thing because no, I too nice. starting this off, I've been told I'm too nice. I do a lot of free shit. You know, the things that we offer as services from merch to booking a show completely where you don't have to do anything but show up to this show where you get to take those videos and share them all over their place. There are similar platforms like we do, but they make the band pay to be on them. That to me is completely unfortunate because why would I pay? Why would I tell you guys you have to pay me to play my fucking basement? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, yeah. So that right. should be your philosophy when approaching giant venues because what significance does playing the brat stop really do to you? Because, what, and one thing that you have to look for if you want to continue with this project. Unfortunately, we've become a society based on your social media platform. They had 589 people that liked Friday You guys have 1,739 people the last time I checked. You're more significant than the fucking page that you paid to be on a venue and play. Mm-hmm. Can I get an amen? <laughs> <laughs> amen. Jesus Christ. So moving yeah. forward... Like, if you guys are thinking of doing tours and you're thinking of doing other things that will attract attention to you, um, you know, there are a bunch of places all over the place that want to pay you to be there. Are you thinking perhaps that maybe Milwaukee Punk Fest would be something you would do next year? We, we, we did it. We done Punk Fest every year. Okay. Yeah. You guys did Friday night. We were Yeah, there. no, it was a Thursday night this last That's time. That's right. Thursday. We were no, there we Friday, Saturday. Punk Fest. We did the Center Street Days. Yeah, we do those every summer. Um, Josh, you know, reaches out. I've More draw. I first than talked the other to him in that first did? year, um, and he was nice enough that he got us in on something right away. Oh, after okay. we were only a band for like a like a month, you know, I had reached out to him and kind of introduced myself, and it was pretty cool. Have you continued to partner? It would seem like with the first rule as collaborative um, businessmen with other bands to continue to help promote yourselves. Yes. We collaborate. I think we do a lot of work with all, all the bands that we play with. To be honest, we you know we buddy up with people very easy. Um, and again, we're all out there just to have a good time. Um, so, um, size fives, um, first rule, stay up all night and fight, hijack, uh, resistance. Um, a lot of you know great bands in the area that we've really become good friends with, and we all kind of co-promote each other. Mm-hmm. You know. We, you know, these other bands have stuff, you know, we'll try to go to their shows whenever mm-hmm. able, you know, share their stuff, invite, you know, friends out to their, their events. We just that uh, that extra little help to make, help them become successful. And we, you know, we genuinely want to help each other, you know, so I think, you know, we, it's cool. Will you continue to use Bo as <laughs> your, your mix master and producer? <clears throat> um, yeah, but Bo, Bo's fantastic. We do, uh, we do all the, you know, tracking there and then both, um. Yeah, and then we both do, uh, Bo and myself, we do mixing. Uh, I like it. When you go in and record, is it individually when you have time to go record your own pieces, or do you go in as a group? Yeah. Individually. Individually, usually. Uh, Just with our work schedules, and, you know, I'll I'll usually go over there first, and I'll work with Bo. We'll lay out all the tracks, get the, you know, get all the channels lined up, and, you know, plugins all set up, ready to go, and we'll have... Jared come in a day and we'll just knock out all the drum songs in one day, two days, and then I'll come in and I'll do the guitars, layer up a few different guitars in you know, a couple of days, and then he'll come into the bass, and then we'll do the vocals together. How so. long did it take you to make After Party? Not long. Not too long. I mean, a few weekends. Probably three sessions. Yeah. Maybe yeah. three, and like a lot of five, six hour the, sessions. You know, and I had, you know, had to, you know, several other sessions going back to mix with Bo. Um, 
Oh, so you go in and sit yeah, in when yeah. he mixes them? Yeah, Bo's fantastic. He has a great ear. It's really nice because I always, I'm really OCD and I've always done my own mixing and mastering and stuff, but it's really nice because he has a great ear too. So we bounce a lot of ideas off each other and we mix and automate together and do all that. So it's really cool. Um, yeah. So I know we've talked about this previously, um, but I'm going to ask it again. Are you guys using a distributor for your music? Like CD Baby? No, I don't use CD Baby. Or Distro Kid? No. no. It's all you? It's Slaughter for the, Party? For the, the CD? Yes. Yeah, it's us. It is? Well, like, are you talking about the like platforms? Like, like distribution. All that stuff? Do you send online it to some place to be distributed? <laughs> or online platform? distribution? Yes. yes. Why do you do that? So the music gets out there. Do you know that we're you too can little. do that? No, you're too not little. too little. You are not too little. You need to educate yourselves, my friends, because you can be saving a whole bunch of money and reaping all of the benefit from it. Do you have a SoundCloud account? Yes. Because your SoundCloud account gives you the validity and with your likes accrued on Facebook to be on Spotify and iTunes without having to pay a distributor. Plus, you maintain all of the own rights to your music and royalties. So... That's something to consider. Uh, as we, we get royalties. No, and no. I will show you when you play this because you just played this, and if you've already sent it to CD Baby, I will get a notification in an email that says, "Oops, there's been a copyright law. CD mm. Baby says that you've been playing music." It will not say Slaughter Party. If you own the rights to your music through that distributor, it would say Slaughter Party, and I know this because it happens quite frequently. And Ego and the Maniacs from Ohio had come on and played one of their new albums, and it popped up that. We went through and read the contract and highlighted where it was that they were contractually obligated to not have the rights to their music because they used them and put that in the video. Do you read the contracts before you pay the money to do that? <laughs> Dang. Yeah. So. Light bulb. <laughs> because it's like three to ten years depending on how much you pay them and where you want it to go. We're on all of those platforms that you would pay a distributor to be on and we've not had to pay for anything because we put it on Spotify and we've created enough metadata that we're considered internet significant mm -hmm. to be on all of those other yeah, platforms. Yeah, you have the song kick account and all that so your Spotify, will you can put in your mm -hmm. events and all things on that. So And then you can submit it to Pandora and wait for the long, long vetting process that yeah. is that. It's yeah. like singing at the DMV. It's like, it mm -hmm. takes about six months to a year if you submit something to Pandora because yep. everybody that sits... Yeah, we're, we're still in pending status. Yes, they <laughs> listen to everything the and then put it, yes. Yeah, every, everything is curated. It takes a, it takes a while. But it's interesting because that is a whole historical library of music, which I find interesting. Yeah. I know that we are probably approaching the top of the hour. So where can people find you online and, you know, upcoming shows because you have a couple <coughs> of them within the next few weeks? Yeah, um, I'll do it. Um, <laughs> if you want. You're quiet. Uh, well, we just did this one. Next one is uh, November 17th at the Port. And that one we're playing with Beaker. Stay up all night and fight. Beaker. Boyker. 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 Juicy and prunes. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Juicy spoon. Juicy prunes. Almost all of the people standing in the basement minus Basic like a right few. Right now, I have <laughs> representative. Uh, uh, Brian, Brian McKay. Uh, Brian McKay. Yeah, from, they're uh, out of Green Bay. Green Bay, right? Yep. Okay. And that's that show. Uh, free show at the port, as all shows. Free. No money. That's right. So no excuses. Please. Please. ID. Unless it's and a snowstorm. Well, yeah, if that's yeah. the case, I won't be there either. I yeah. know, right? Wow. <laughs> yeah, because he's a plow, oh, yeah. plow artist. A yes. plow artist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, Is that like a sandwich artist? Yeah. That's got to go yeah. on the next CD. <laughs> plow artist? Jared Drummer slash plow artist. <laughs> Plowist. Um, Plowist. And <laughs> December 1st is Krampus Fest. Yes. Yes. That's yes. What we're doing at so that's going to be back at uh, Chansky's, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. That was yep. cool. And we're going to be two bands that night. We're going ah, to be yeah. Creepy Little Things oh, yeah. Slaughter Party. That's right. Well, what does that mean? That. We're going to be playing as another band for a few songs. Like you're going to all be like you, but like call you a different thing? Yes. Okay. Are you going to wear an well, outfit? Sort of. No. No. <laughs> no, we have uh, the, the founder of this. Um, uh, Krampus Fest, uh, Scotty Dam, Marty um, Goldberg. He um, was uh, his music project, creepy little things, uh, goth goth project, yes. pretty cool stuff. Uh, but he's um, we've we're going to 
uh, we're gonna be playing performing a few of his songs, um, doing okay. instrumental. So he, you know, he'll be playing guitar and uh, right, so you're the backing yeah, band. We're gonna be, you know, we're gonna be his band. Cool. For a couple she songs, his his, his event, his benefit it he puts together, he does a great job with it. Really fantastic job, and it's a really good cause. Um, so it's really cool, kind of being a part of that, so we can help him out and That's get Milwaukee. Out some of that his is music Milwaukee. I've heard. The chance he's Milwaukee, then awesome. <laughs> Does the CD release show? At Hatrix. At Hatrix. Yep. And yeah, December fifteenth, we're doing a Toys oh, for Tots benefit at McCullough's with uh, Shots and Ladders. Really cool guys. They're cool. Uh, Cover band that I've known, uh, a lot of guys have been in a lot of different bands. And, uh, they we have played with them once before. They're yeah, cool. they're super, yeah. super cool really guys. Nice guys. Yeah. A lot of fun. And, uh, that's fun, it for party. December. And we can be found yeah. on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram and all that fun stuff. Twitter. We're on all that crap. RedTube. We're not on RedTube. <laughs> are you on Bandcamp? <laughs> yes. Uh, we're on Bandcamp. SoundCloud. We are on SoundCloud? I don't know. We're on SoundCloud, Bandcamp, we're on everything. iTunes, Spotify. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Google Amazon Prime. Deezer, Weezer. <laughs> yeah, whoever oh. plays us. So come to a show, whatever. get some merch. Uh, December 8th, if it is that you want the new album, show up to Hatrix. I believe it's five There's bucks. There's no yeah. wanting. You will get go, the new album. Go there, see them and five other awesome bands get some merch support local music and get continue to like share and follow us. why maybe you will no, that's wrong. Okay. Roasted. Oh, yeah. That's the oh, roast. you're talking about to get yeah, roasted. Yeah, show. Get roasted. Talking. There'll, oh, roast there'll be free corn? No. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh, maybe. You can find that tomorrow. <laughs> corn? Ew. Oh, Not again. Oh, okay. You're roasted. Uh, so thank you guys for coming back on the show. Thank and you. we will leave you and bid you adieu into this evening. We'll catch you next week when we have James White from the Trees of Life joining us for a phone interview. And with that, good night, Kay. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.